up and good morning guys welcome back to another video we just went to uh, home depot we got a truck bed here full of some supplies well today we're going to continue a few more projects over at rhino ranch if you watched the previous video you know what got us up to today when we get there i'll fill you in on what we're going to be doing now i will say feeding the animals um, and giving them fresh water and all that is not a, a really big task the way it's all set up here but the second you introduce having to haul water around um it definitely becomes a uh, a little bit of a cluster if you know oh all right well we just uh, sat on some water on the seat there yeah not exactly the most fun thing to do hauling a ton of five gallon buckets tomorrow is hopefully the big day that we get the pump house uh or at least the pump up and running and we don't have to do this anymore but fresh water is important so we gotta take care of the animals all the other guys have already got water these are going down to our good friend barbecue the pig everybody's eating right now everybody's happy wish me luck on not spilling this stuff and i say that because i've already spilled a ton of it and i'm sitting in a puddle of water and nothing over here is like graded out nicely i mean there's like gentle slopes to hard drop offs to more gentle slopes so eventually i'm gonna come in here and just grade this whole property out i know i mentioned it in uh yesterday's video whether oh oh okay I, oh jeez. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, well, the golf cart's getting washed. Barbecue, I hope you appreciate this water, even though I know you're going to dump it into your mud pit right when I pour it in here. I'm coming, yeah. Look. Look, I got you water. Is that what you wanted? Yeah, is that good? Yeah, it's good stuff, huh? I bet you would dump this bucket out right now if I left it with you. Nah, all right. So Barbecue's got two water containers over here. You can see she makes them absolutely filthy. This one is soft rubber. And she'll actually dump it herself into her mud pit anytime she wants more mud. So even though we give it to her to drink, she still dumps it. So we've got a little harder plastic one here. But again, she's a little bit of a messy girl. So we got to wash this thing out like three times a day. Now where we left off yesterday, uh, we had just gotten all of the PVC water lines in the ground. And once we realized we had the ground open, being that we want to run a lot of electrical around the property, we figured we might as well use the same trench to run electrical in. That way we're not digging things up twice so i've got a bunch of conduit here i decided to go one inch i know i totally could have done this in three quarter one inch is probably overkill but i'd rather just put down something bigger than what i need for now um, i might even actually put in two runs just in case the odd chance that we ever need to run something more over here you know for uh 40 more bucks total for you know however many feet that i got versus uh running three quarter inch it's worth having that extra space in case you want to do two runs through one conduit or whatever it may be. So we're going to throw the conduit in today, um, splitting it, running one over to the chicken coop as well. It's pretty much the same thing that we're doing with the water. And then for the water line, I don't remember if I talked about this or not, we're actually going to run it up this post right here and we're going to keep all the water overhead. That way we can drop it down into each animal stall as well as cross over to the animal stalls over here. And we're going to be putting in our hand wash sink in this stall right here which is kind of like our storage stall so we're gonna be putting the sink on the back side we actually already have the sink here it's up on the corner of the guest house so we're gonna go grab that now bring it up here and just kind of get a general idea on how we're gonna do things so here's the sink we're gonna be using um you know it's not a bad location over here but it's kind of far away from everything so we're going to uh just take this up good thing we already got a water line for it we'll just shut that off not that we even really have water coming in here oh you can see look at even this hose got pretty toasted and melted in the fire. That's how close it came to the house, guys. We got very, very lucky. This can come with us. And we're down a leg. Leg, you come with us. Stay. You know, I have the flip down back seat to install on the golf cart that has like a nice flatbed on the back of it. And I know it's not a utility vehicle. Yes, we need to get a utility vehicle, but we've got a lot of other projects to worry about right now. Eventually one day we'll get the back seat put on. Well, we made it all the way over. Right when we park, it falls out and all the legs fall off. So the thing is gonna go somewhere in about this area right here. And what I wanna do behind it, I mean, I could just let it drain out onto the dirt. There is a slope right there. So it's not like the water would really puddle up here, but I don't like that. That doesn't seem like a kind of semi-permanent solution to me. So we actually are gonna plumb it down into the ground, but I'm gonna grab the mini X and I'm just gonna dig a, you know, a decent little hole behind there, fill it with gravel and just make like a little gray water kind of leech pit. Bubbles, dude, you're getting sideways, bro. You wall riding over here? What's up, big bubs? How you doing, bubs? You good? Yeah, you wanna say hi to everybody? Basically the plan is all the water lines are gonna come down. We'll probably have a spigot right up here and then hook up our cold water line. I will be swapping out this here faucet. These are the worst faucets in the world. I hate anything that doesn't have a lever style that like if your hands are covered in, you know, poop. And eventually there's a good chance there's gonna be concrete getting poured. At least in this stall right here, being that this is our storage stall, there's a good chance on the breezeway in here that we will pour some concrete just to eliminate any like giant mud issues. Uh, and we will put down uh, sl uh, no slip mats. That way all the animals don't slip or anything like that. So don't worry, we do have plenty of rubber mats around here. Abel's getting ready to do some conduit. You ready, Abel? Yeah. Now our plan is we're gonna run one of the conduit off of the house right here. We're gonna split it at a T 
That way one run will go that way, one run will go that way. We're gonna use a box right here, just like an in-ground uh, sprinkler valve box. That way we can get in there if we ever need to make connections or to pull wire or whatever it may be. We'll just have like kind of a little intermediate run there. Uh, one of the other things that's important to do, yeah, see, stop one of them. Okay. Yeah. One of the other things that's important to do is uh, you wanna mark where all your stuff is. So you can do it above ground, you can do it underground. I was thinking about putting just a couple of little markers above ground just so I would know in the future, but what I think we're gonna opt to do is about a foot above all of my pipes that are buried in the ground, I'm just gonna bury some caution tape over top of my trench. That way, if I'm ever coming through here hogging out some dirt and digging down, I know the second I hit caution tape, a foot below that is all my pipes. They do make specific tape for this reason, and uh, some of it's metallic, so you can actually track your pipe with a metal detector, or they actually have like the little readers. But in a pinch, Home Depot didn't have it. Caution tape should work just fine. You could also get away with like throwing a row of gravel over top of the pipe, so you know if you're digging down and you get to gravel, but caution tape's a real good attention grabber. So if you're not the one doing it, somebody else might stop and look. Cool, we've got our box in with all of our conduit stubbed up there. I'm gonna go ahead right now, backfill a foot, and then throw our caution tape over top and then complete the backfill. But you know, on this type of process, the digging really takes the longest. Dropping the pipes in goes pretty quick. We've got our pipe stubbed up over here. We've gone ahead and chipped out the concrete on this post. That way we can get everything really close to the post because the animals are gonna wanna rub up against it. And then we're gonna put all the spigots at about five foot height, give or take, somewhere around there. That way it's above the donkey's head. They can't get there. Those guys are pretty mischievous. They can actually undo the latches on their pens that they're in right there from the inside, just using their tongue in their mouth. So we wanna make sure they're not over here turning water and stuff on all the time. We'll get in the mini X here and let's start backfilling. So we got about a foot of dirt over top of the pipe, actually a little bit more right here, obviously, but now's a good time to put our caution tape in. Mr. Chava, we'll lay it down here, throw our last little bit of dirt on top, and we can call these trenches done. Throw some sand and dirt over top to hold her down. One other thing you wanna make sure you do is make sure you take a bunch of pictures of where your trenches are. Um, you can take measurements if you want, if you want to keep really detailed records, but pictures should give you a pretty good judgment of where they are, like in between these two trees now with the pictures I took, I know pretty much where that uh, line is running. So I decided to take a quick little midday break here, get all the animals a nice watermelon treat. All you donkeys, you happy? Well, you want more? You already got like a half a watermelon, man. We can't give you too much. You're gonna start looking like our big man Willie over here. We're gonna take some down to barbecue the pig. And I found this out the other day, didn't know this, but apparently, maybe not all pigs, but apparently our pig doesn't like to eat the rind of the watermelon. So she literally cleans this bad boy really well. Just leaves the green part, which is impressive considering how like they don't have necks and they can't really articulate their mouths like some animals. So it's pretty impressive how well she cleans us. Let's go see if we can wake her up here. Barbecue, are you home? Hey baby, oh you're sleeping? I got you a watermelon. Hey come on. Yeah, look I got you some watermelon. Oh, that's good stuff right there. Oh yeah, oh I know, I know, that's good. Yeah, now you're getting close to my fingers. All right, we're gonna come out here, come on. Okay, we'll come back in a minute and we'll see how well you clean that. I've gone ahead and rough graded everything. I did leave it a little bit high just because it's so dry out here. We have no water to put on it while we we're backfilling today that I know the second water comes through here, it's just gonna suck up into the dirt and everything's just gonna shrink a little bit. So hopefully I left enough dirt up there that all the trenches don't like reveal themselves the second we get a rainstorm or something that comes through. We're still exposed over here because we need to get a heat gun out here and we're just gonna coax the uh, conduit just a little bit over there. You don't want to put any type of sharp bends or 90s in conduit because you're going to be pulling wire through there. So you want to make it easy on the electrician. And we've got our first spigot in. I know this is high enough for all the donkeys. If we ever have horses in here, we might have to like 
put something around it just to keep the horses from uh, turning the water on and off because I'm sure they would love to play with it. But again, these are actually going to all be feeding uh, auto waterers like I showed you guys kind of earlier, that booger right there. The next thing I'm gonna do is start digging my little pit. That way I can throw some gravel and make my leech pit for the sink. So I'm gonna go grab the Mini X right now and get her dug because well, today I think is the last day then I'm gonna keep the Mini X here. I'm probably gonna call it off a rent. Now I know I keep mentioning uh, the way that this property was graded, but there's a lot of stuff that I just really wanna change. Over here on the back side of the corral, I don't know if you guys can see, there's basically about a four foot width path that's flat before you start to get to that slope. Previous owner, basically all he had was a uh, box scraper or a gannon on the back of his tractor, so any path cut through here is pretty much the width of that. But I'd love to get in here and cut paths that are wide enough for trucks to get through and not be uh, smooshed up against the fencing. My original plan was to dig my pit outside here, outside of the stall, run my plumbing out and down into my gravel pit. But there's a flaw in my plan because uh, anything here, you need to protect from the animals because they will rub up against it or you know hit it or something. And we don't want to break the drain line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dig a pit here and I'm gonna try and just gently get up underneath uh, the corral fencing right there. That way we can run our drain line straight down on the back side of the fence where it's protected from the animals. A pretty quick easy dig um don't tell nobody i might have love tapped that bar there a couple times but i think we're far enough under now let's see how old barbecue did here on her watermelon there it is spot of the rind she cleaned it better the other day but i think that's that's pretty dang good for being a pig right there tomorrow i'm gonna go pick up the drain line and then i think we're also gonna be putting these posts in tomorrow so i will see you guys tomorrow and we're back day two you guys can see we've already been kind of running around this morning we've got all of our posts that are going to be in for our party light trick that we're going to try and pull here we're going to be stringing lights to all of these posts because it is really really dark out here at night and until we get like a full street light set up and figure out our landscape plan this is going to be kind of our temporary setup um hopefully it looks all right and it doesn't look like the carnivals in town which i'm a little bit worried it's going to look like that but we're going to find out once we get it done now probably the best news today is we've got the boys from Seavers pump over here getting our whole new well set up new pump new pressure tank new everything getting put in you know guys i called a ton of pump companies and nobody called me back on multiple occasions nobody answered the phone some of them even have secretaries not even a call back i understand the smaller guys that you know the phone rings like to the actual owner and he's out on site but russ was the first one to give me a call back same day willing to come out here same day and try and get me a temporary setup unfortunately they weren't letting anybody in on the road we got a whole new setup going in today a super sweet truck crane that we need look at this unexpected guest we got coming up here hey bro what's up buddy Did you bring some snacks you brought us a sink, dude? I got you a sink. We already got a sink. Oh. Right now we got Abel running our water line. We decided to go above ground, like I said earlier, everywhere in here because there's a good chance we're gonna pour concrete in here and to make any changes later, it's easier when everything's overhead versus in the ground. So right now it's just duct taped in place, but we do have pipe clamps, everything's gonna get clamped to the overhead structure and then we're gonna be dropping down. While Abel's working on the water supply, Chris and I are gonna start getting the drain set up over here for our sink. You can see my little leach pit that I uh, filled yesterday. We got a bunch of gravel in there. I left it low right now because I want the pipe to actually go down into the ground and not just sit above it and let it drain in. Well, we were looking good. We just got news that our uh, there's an issue with our pump in the ground that's 300 feet down. Russ gets to pull out 300 feet. Uh, I don't even know, how do you pull it out? By the wire or by the pipe? By the pipe. Oh, okay. One stick at a time. Oh joy. <laughs> After you just got everything all beautifully put together, now we gotta pull it apart. We're hoping it's a small issue and that something's lodged in it or something's weird and we don't need a new pump down in the ground. Yeah, we're hoping we find a bad wire. Yeah, let's just shoot for bad wires. <laughs> well, I hoped it was right there, but see how the liner melted in there? Yeah. So what they're doing right now is they're pulling all of the pipe out of the ground with pulling the pump up. Uh, looks like some of the pipeline are melted. We're hoping either that somehow got to a wire, but so far the wire's looking pretty good. So some of that might've fallen into the pump. Hopefully the pump's not dead. I'm, I'm over seeing all the pipe come out. We want a pump. I think I've been a little bamboozled, y'all. There was supposed to be a pump at 300 feet. We're at about 340 so far. I don't know if it's give or take 300 feet, but supposedly now I don't even know if I believe it's a 600 foot well. That's about 500. 
64, 64, 80 something. Only 200 feet deeper than it was supposed to be. That's all there is to it? That's it. Jeez. Shoot, if they were getting 15 gallons a minute out of it, we'd clear it. We'd probably get some good stuff. You guys can test it while it's out there. Yeah. All right. Is that a wire or a root? Uh, PVC. Oh. Off the uh, liner. Liner. Uh, more tape. Black tape. Peller's Lodge. So there's about, uh, what, $1,500 more of cost, well, not including all that pipe, just that pump right there. Yeah, definitely uh, not the news we were looking for today. I thought today we'd have at least water getting pumped up to the tank up here. We knew we weren't gonna have it to the house because there's a couple more fittings that we need and we gotta break out some concrete where the uh, PVC kind of melted down to get it to pump to the house. But uh, one more setback, guys, one more setback. We're so close to having water. Hopefully we can get that new pump here by tomorrow. Um, you know, I'm not holding my breath at this point, but we need some water. Well, we're gonna turn our bad news about the uh, pump into a good day here. Barbecue, you saying hi to everybody? Yeah, you, you've been walking around a lot. I know, you've been walking around a lot. We're about to jump on running the drain line right now for our sink. So we've got our ABS pieces, and basically it's just gonna be super simple. Um, we're probably even doing more than most people would do. They'd probably just let it like flow into a bucket or anything like that, but we're gonna be hooking up to the bottom of the sink right there, coming down. We're just gonna make a little S turn just to get it closer to the fence here. It's gonna go down into my gravel pit. We'll pull some more gravel around the pipe and then cover it with dirt so you never know that there's a gravel pit down there. So we've got our little S turn that we're gonna be making here. Like I said, the drain's about center there. We wanna shift it as far back as we can and that'll put us right into our pit. Good, little test fit, make sure everything's good, straight, and then we pull it off and we glue it. Now, I might have gone a little bougie with the uh, faucet that we're gonna be using up here, but to me, these old school grandma style ones, just like doorknobs, don't make sense. I mean, if you got poop covered hands, you gotta grab the crap out of this thing to turn it on, then you wash your hands, now you gotta co touch all the poop covered stuff to turn it off, don't make no sense. This one, you know, it's got a lever, just smack it on, smack it off, and it's got a pull out sprayer, so if we gotta wash out any of the animal stuff, we're good to go. Go. Easy. So if you guys are ever in a pinch where you need to re hole saw out a hole, make a little template like I just did right there with wood and it'll save that thing from bouncing all over. Just take whatever hole saw you are, make a little piece of wood. Typically you'd clamp it down, but for drilling through plastic we didn't have much movement. Like a glove. Well, we got the faucet in, everything looking good. I'm gonna continue filling my hole here with a little bit more gravel. Like I said, I think it's about two feet deep of gravel so far. Probably overkill more than I need, but you know. Let's do it, let's do it right. All right, well we've got pretty much all the overhead pipe secured. We still need to get a couple more fittings to come down over there to go to our hand wash sink. Our good buddy Dedek just showed up. Uh, we'll walk over there. He's working on Chris's work truck to hopefully resurrect one of the uh, trucks over here in our truck graveyard. Now, I probably shouldn't say anything before we uh, get too deep in this, but for uh, 6.0, if it's just the alternator. Pull up on the, I think we're gonna no, do pretty good here. On, uh, the belt. There's like a key do down here you're supposed to be able to depress and it'll hold the tension in the lock position. We've got the new alternator right here. Dedek was gracious enough to pick this up today for us. Old one's out, new one's going in. I think all Fords should come standard with this work platform, huh Dedek? Dude, this even got like a spot to slide your chunk less into. Dude, this thing's fantastic, look at that. I'm, I ain't going nowhere. Hey, dude, built to work on. Built for tuck. Yeah, this actually ain't too bad. Well, Idler took a little figure out but after that we're good oh, look at this is the angle right here get it dead jeez dude oh. where were you the other night i'm all that is man dang all right fire her up well, hold, on, so me, hold on we got jumper cables now, let me make sure i'm actually on all the pulleys so we don't throw it the second we start it yep. make sure there's no chupacabras in there the other day me and chris were walking by this truck and he was making some noises at us chris pop the hood nah. come on dude so we're gonna grab batteries out of the uh k20 here to hopefully Jump start the uh, the six O. Dang man, we don't have the excavator here anymore. How are we gonna get this thing open? Oh okay. Oh, she's alive! She used this grounding strap and uh, some other wire off the truck as a uh, jumper cable. Creative little guy there he is. In the next day or so, we're gonna jump back on fencing out here. I wish I had water to turn on and show you guys everything that we just did and everything that works. I mean, I really wish so, so I could stop hauling buckets because I've been hauling probably I don't know 
hundred something gallons of water a day in buckets to keep all the animals nice and hydrated it is what it is so with that guys thank you so much for watching if you're not subscribed already please hit the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content don't forget to give this video a like and get a thumbs up don't forget to check out workforapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life you gotta be willing to work for it you guys are the best pull the outro damn Yeah. Uh.